Yes, yes, y'all. Welcome back to another episode of the Clip Notes Podcast. You know, we're available everywhere that you listen to audio. Thank you for everybody who's been tapping in. Truly appreciate it. Thank you so much for spreading the word. All of those things go such a long way in helping us do what we do, which is just bring you great content, supporting great artists. And this one, you're definitely going to be wanting to share this one, man. If you're from Northwest or if you are a fan of Northwest hip hop, then you really gonna dig this interview, man. I had a chance to chop it up with a legendary Northwest hip hop crew. Part of the bigger collective Old Dominion, these cats are back together making great music. It's like they never left, you know what I mean? The original members, DJ Trey, Nightclubber Lang, Destro Destructo, Boom Bap Project. They are back, y'all. Brand new music. They We recorded this soon after they, soon after they released their first single, Hagler and Hearns, which was dope. We had a chance to talk about the single, talk about the album that's already done and more music that they're currently working on. We talked about releasing music in these times, how things are a little bit different from from when they last released music over a decade ago, but how they are tapping into the relationships that they've built over the years. And they have some really exciting things on deck as a part of a uh, new music they released and whole new, a whole new drive, man. They talked about, you know, releasing the project solo, not doing this with the label, a different approach than they've done in the past. They talked about building with their audience. Just a really good interview, man. And uh, like I said, I think you're going to dig it. So uh, tap in, man, to the latest episode of the Cliff Notes podcast with Boom Bap Project. Support for the Cliff Notes podcast comes from Acapella Apparel, an idea born from a love of hip-hop, funk, and soul music and its surrounding cultures. With fashion being a huge visual part of the cultures, they've created expressive images to pay homage, invoke nostalgia, and showcase the elements that make up the lifestyle and cultures of these genres. Acapella, apparel for the music lifestyle. For more information, check out acapella.com. That's A K E. P-E-L-E dot com. Ladies and gentlemen, the show you're about to listen to may contain explicit content. So guess what? You need to put them babies to sleep. This is for grown folks only. So we're not held liable for anything you might be offended by. Thank you for listening. Yes, yes, yeah. Welcome back to another episode of the Cliff Notes Podcast. Available everywhere you get your podcasts. Hey, yo, we just gonna jump in, man, because I'm excited to have these fellas live on the podcast. And it's and they back, man. They back in a big, big way. Uh, Northwest legendary crew. Boom Bat Project is... Oh, Cliff Notes, what's good, fellas? What up, what up? Yo, yo. Hey, yo, we got, uh, we got Destro Destructo. We got Kareem, up? a.k.a. Nightclub Lang. We got the original DJ Trey all live on Cliff Notes, man. Man, so yo, yo. Hey, yo. So, like, off top, man, uh, it's crazy to say that to say that um, you guys are back after a minute, but it has been a minute since we've heard like music from Boom Bat Project. Yes, yeah, man. It's, it's probably been uh, almost fifteen years since we've uh, since we've released anything. So this is a, a momentous occasion for us just getting back together, but also, you know, how times have changed, how the music has changed, the scenes have changed, everything has kind of changed. So we're adapting, the business has changed, we're adapting to what it is right now. So uh, it's, it's definitely an eye opener, but it's a great time. No doubt, man. No doubt. So like, like just, just starting there, man, the fact that things have changed so much, just from a business standpoint, like you guys are back, you got the you got the new single that's out right right now, Hagler and Hearns. But like this is this is everything is boom bap productions. Like there's no label behind it. It's just like y'all just y'all just doing it on your own, which is different from from where it was when y'all left it. Um, yeah. Is that does it feel daunting or does it just feel like more more grassroots? Like when you were first getting together. Well, I guess I could take that one. I mean, you know, we we kind of looked at at what it was right now and and the nature of the business and you know labels aren't really doing anything for you right now really and and people are giving up their their masters to the label and 
um, they're taking their percentage and not really doing a lot with it, you know, and, and we looked at it uh, and Destro Dom has been releasing music this whole time. I haven't, but I've, I've also ran a label and I ran a marketing company and I've worked with, you know, a ton of different labels. So, you know, we kind of knew what the landscape was and we just decided looking at it and, and what it is now music, it, it, it's almost seems like it's disposable these mm -hmm. days. And, and, you know, we just thought it would be better for us to control our own destiny and, uh, and put this project out ourselves. And, and again, just looking at the way the labels work, I mean, I didn't want to, we had some conversations, you know, we had some really good conversations with some of the people we work with. Um, there's a lot of interest, but just going back and looking what it is and talking to a lot of our folks, it just didn't make sense for us. And this is funner right now. It means that uh, we're all working hard on it, you know, playing roles that, that we might not have played in the past. And, uh, you know, it's it's a challenge, but it's also fun at the same time. No doubt, no doubt. Chopping up with Boom Bap Project. So, like like you said, man, Destro's been releasing music, and it's been a it's been a thrill for me to just build to build with you over the years, man, and all of the stuff that you've done. So, like through that process, being a recording artist, releasing music, has that given you um, sort of a different perspective to bring to the crew now that the collectives together, saying, "Yo, this is this is what it's looked like for me to be." To be releasing music and this is this is the a, a way right. we should go no I, I think it's been both i think there's definitely been a lot of learning that i did on my own a lot of things that i probably should have done better that i've been able to bring and kind of have that in perspective but i've also learned so much from kareem and trey as we've been building that it's kind of exciting because i'm like oh i should have thought of that before and that kind of stuff but it's definitely that grind of okay it's just on me i think is definitely helping now I mean, yes, it's on us three, but it's like it it's not it's not an issue to be like, hey, I got to send these hundred emails. Cool. You know, right. or I got to make these phone calls, uh, which is great. But I think it's also it's really exciting for me because seeing everybody come together like Voltron and Kareem's done so much in like in the business aspect of it that he's it's just I'm just sucking up the game, man. And like learning as much, but then also trying to take initiative and lead on stuff. And I think that's been one of the exciting things for me to see is see whether it's me, Kareem or Trey each going like, hey, I got this route or I'm going to bring this. And like everybody wants to contribute. Nobody is sitting on the sidelines. Nobody's like, hey, is not marketing supposed to take care of that? Everybody is taking ownership and we're keeping each other accountable. And I think we all want to do good for each other, which is like a light under our fire anyways, you know? No doubt. No doubt. Hey, yo, so, so like from a DJ perspective, Mm -hmm. Obviously, Trey, you I mean, you've been spinning, you've been you've been doing events and and well, maybe not so much in 2020. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like, in, you know, when we consider what it's like Kareem said, like the music has changed. Things have changed since since the crew yeah. was releasing music, so having an opportunity to see what people are vibing to. But then knowing that Boom Back is going to be true to Boom Bap, like how do you how do you balance that? Like from a, from a, from a DJ creative perspective? Well, just these, you know, with these interesting times now, um, and also, you know, with social media, now it is a totally, totally different game. Like um, when Kareem mentioned uh, a while back that when we started, like there was no social media. There was like, yeah. you know, it was putting up flyers or, you know, emails. It was no Instagram or facebook myspace back then so basically we're, we're starting from ground zero and you know we're, we're putting out the content by ourselves, and you know i'm just really excited for this process because i haven't really had this much um input um in an album process so I'm, I'm really happy that um i'm back with the crew again and excited for everybody to hear what we have coming out and yeah, man, I'm 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 really pumped that's what's for the world to hear it. That's what's I would even cool. add to what Trey said. Like you said, man, when we started, there was MySpace might have just been coming out, but yeah. nowadays people for their whole album they're doing a visual or video for every song, and 
and going on IG live and all that. We uh, like, man, you, you're thinking 2000 when we 99, mm -hmm. 2000, when we first got together, the internet wasn't even the main way of getting your music out there, right. you know? Uh, and mm -hmm. so it was flyers and, and we mm -hmm. were all over. We were in Portland, Seattle, uh, Vancouver, Eugene, Oakland, San Francisco, like nonstop. And just, you know, me and Dom used to drive down there and yes. drop off our CDs at Amoeba and, and, <laughs> and, and, and with, uh, with ACAC. <laughs> and, and then like, we, you know, all that and, and built those relationships. And now those relationships have changed you know and and uh it's adapting but like i said we've, we've had a a hand in it and now this is it, it's really good because we're creating these relationships we re recreating relationships and man i've been talking we've all been talking to like dudes that run hip-hop sites and blogs and, and things like that and creating those relationships that we didn't have before and the feedback because like cats were were fans of us when they were kids and stuff and the feedback has been really good, man. So that, that's yeah. been that's been one of the best parts about it. No doubt. Yeah, no doubt. I kind of think about it kind of like, you know, everybody has that conversation with friends. Like, if I knew what I know now back then when I was in high school, things. And I think in a certain <laughs> aspect, we're kind of getting to do that, right? Like, mm. the game has changed, but we do have, like, these relationships, whether it was just musically with people who listen to our music or now in a position where they're like, influencing things and are really excited to see us back or it's just kind of the lessons that we learned and like being able to see a bigger perspective that's it's i don't know that it could have been written better you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. for what we're doing right now no doubt no doubt chopping over boom bad project so a couple of things as you mentioned there there are avenues now available that that weren't available and there's obviously pluses and minuses to that right like it's so dope to be mm -hmm. able to get to get that vinyl, to have that and, and be able to put that in the crate, right? But now there's mm -hmm. also an opportunity to get music out that people maybe didn't have an opportunity to get earlier because maybe they didn't get to see mm -hmm. you at, mm -hmm. at a show live in concert with some exclusive situations. But you've mm -hmm. now been able to make that available to people like through the band camp, right? So there's stuff on the band camp that now people can tap in to that they couldn't tap yeah. into unless they saw y'all live. Yeah. We released a whole album that never really came out on on uh, on our last Rhyme Sayers tour. We released an album that um, was like tour only, we called it, but it ended up being you know treated like an actual album, uh, the Shakedown. And that was there was some some bangers on there. Jake gave us some bangers. We did joint with uh, the Visionaries and and a bunch of other stuff. But like yeah, that was one project that a lot of people didn't have access to, but we printed out 5,000 of those CDs and basically every night from here to Europe, uh, everywhere we would slang those and we sold them all pretty much. And that yeah, was, we were, you know, <laughs> we were active sellers of the CDs. I'll tell you that yeah. it wasn't, it wasn't let's hang out at the merch table and see what happens. It was like, Hey bro, club shuts down in a half hour. All right, cool. I'm gonna grab this drink and I'll meet you outside. And we would sit out there for like, an hour, hour and a half, signing autographs, slinging CDs, like making that connection. And I think that's one of the things that really kind of helped, helped us really get known and maximize the tours that we were on. Like, you know, we're on tour with Hyro and those guys. We're the only group sitting outside after the tour slinging CDs. You know what I'm saying? Like, because they don't have to. Everybody knows who Hyro is. Everybody knows nonfiction and OC. If you're going to that show, you know exactly who they are. I even ran into somebody one time who told me that they came up to us and they thought that they were buying an OC CD. Yeah. But they were just super excited and they just paid, grabbed one of our CDs. But they hit me up years later. It was like the first date like him and his girl had been on. They ended up getting married and that's like their that CD is like the soundtrack of their relationship, which is dope. You know what I'm saying? It's one of those things that how could you, you couldn't, you couldn't, there's no way to make that happen unorganically. And it was just us outside of man. There were so many nights when it was cold and we were ready to go back to the hotel room, but we would sit there till everybody was gone. Like if there was more than one person there, we'd be out there slanging CDs, 
And that's I'll say I'll say we we learned a lot of that though because we came up in the era of the Hyro and the Living Legends, yep. the the Latirixes. Uh, none of these cats, when they were coming up, they started the same place we did. And, and, you know, it was great watching that, but man, the legends used to be out there hard selling their shit. Yeah. Um, and that was just inspiration for us to see how, how we needed to do it. And we came up to the Northwest with old dominion and kind of started our own, you know, legends or high row up in the Northwest Seattle and Portland. That was a big, big part of it. And then we kept our connections with them and eventually ended up touring with them and, and doing it. But that do it yourself mantra and, and going out there and being aggressive with it, man, I learned that shit from Sunspot Jones. And, yeah. and you know what I'm saying? Like, like, like for real, man, like those guys were definitely those, the groundbreakers when it came to that shit. I remember the first time I met those guys, we, you and me, I think it was Boom Bap or it might've been Old Dominion and we were opening up for like, might have been Souls of Mischief or something like that. They weren't even on the tour. They were just following the tour bus. They would pop out and talk to the promoter and be like, hey. I was a gonna... promoter by then. You too, were, you so, were. Yeah. <laughs> and, and they would just pop up and they'd be like, hey, can we rock the show? And then like, you know, and just that is guerrilla tactics. Like yep. find your favorite artist. <laughs> Obviously you ain't going to do like, you aren't doing arenas that way, but who cares? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, how gorilla is it to follow your favorite, art, like an artist that you know is going to get a good draw and just be like, hey, can I hop on and open? Yeah. You know? That's crazy, man. <laughs> so, so there's a couple of things, man. So I've, I've really been, I probably started really connecting with, with the North, the, the Northwest music scene in like late, in the late nineties. Right. And, um, knew of, knew of Boom Bat Project, knew of Old Dominion as like this, this this collective this this group of artists just just hugely talented people who who did who then went on to do amazing things as a collective and then as solo artists and subgroups but there's all this great history here right and through the years as I've worked to try to support the local scene I see every you know five or six years a collective or a group of individuals comes up and they say, all right, we about to put music out. We about to put the Northwest on, you know, we about to change the game. Like even, even within the last couple years. And it makes me say, man, like I understand that passion as an artist, but there is so much rich history when it comes to the Portland hip hop scene. And you guys yeah. are truly a part of that. You know what I mean? So Ram. does that like, does that resonate with you at all? Like what you folk have done foundationally you and your contemporaries, when we think about Sam people, when we think about uh, 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 lifesavers and and, mm -hmm. and and all of those cats, um, like does that does that resonate with you? Like your boom bat project, you know what I mean? Absolutely, man. I think you know, like I'll, I'll say, like I started promoting shows with Ron Emright with Direct Productions, and we did some of the only shows here in the in the late nineties. Mm -hmm. early 2000 we brought the roots common eminem black eyed peas but then we were brought everyone from the legends that's how i met destro really you know i started throwing shows and then i started hearing about old dominion next thing you know i'm in old dominion but a lot of <laughs> what happens here in the northwest you mentioned sam people lifesavers lifesavers got on with quantum yeah. and and i brought you know black alicious lyrics born latif to town and i know they met you know like through whether it was through me or or just the connection yeah. you know it's all connected now the lifesavers are our brothers the whole misfit libretto like that's our brothers sam people are our brothers you know it's like we're all we're all there but i would like to think in in doing this from the turn of the 90s i mean you know the 2000s that we were one of the first to do that and and you know kind of pave the road i would like to think uh for a lot of it so i definitely feel uh you know happy and proud of of what it is yeah. but now coming back in 2021 it's like man we got to let y'all cats know who we are no doubt and, yeah. and that that's kind of what the music is right now don't forget there, there's cats there's this uh this director for instance that didn't even know who the fuck we were and and he's working on all the with all these trap kids and things like that. And it's like, man, it's 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 our time to come back and let them know who we are. No doubt. Yeah. No doubt. And I think with the whole history of it, I think one thing 
to me, and this isn't, uh, this isn't trying to be a humble brag, but I feel like the tree of old dominion has spawned a lot of these, like, let's, like I came from the tree of misfit massive. That was her, the first, like my man, mix master KD, he, it was me and Quill and we would have to go over to mix master KD's house right because he knew that we wanted to rap yeah. i think we did that for six months showing him like our progress before he introduced us to jumbo got you like got he you. wouldn't even take us over there he was like hey i got somebody who's got some beats i think it's gonna be dope but yeah. we got to get these up so he sat there he was like a mentor to us yeah. he would sit there and like he he we'd be at his uh in his uh room with the turntables and he'd just be put instrumental after after instrumental and he'd be all right show me what you guys been working on yeah, yeah. then li- lifesavers you know what i'm saying and that tree and then boom bap we were not boom bap but b thought at the time and snafu we kind of had our own thing so we kind of met up with old dominion when you look at that tree from that you know what i'm saying like sam people's kind of evolved out of that like if the homies that were super tight with us that created their own thing that kind of flew out of that i mean even uh are people's up in Seattle. I mean, there's a lot yeah. of groups that kind of like ghetto blue scholars, children, ghetto, blue scholars, yeah. word that, sayer and source of labor. I mean, um, Henri yeah. and JFK were taking Macklemore on tour before anybody who knew who Macklemore was. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and it's a love thing. I think it's dope that we have, even if it's very minorly helped open lanes for people. Yeah. That to me is the most telling thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I'm the most proud of. Like, we've been able to do some really cool shit. We've also helped other people get to do their own cool shit without us having to be any part of it. Like, that's all their own work. Yeah. But we help. Maybe we cracked the door open. Or maybe we just showed them that you could be w- kind of weird and a little bit different than everybody else and be so, like, reach people. Yeah. But that tree is, is, it's almost like a six degrees when you talk about people that have really, like, been able to do a lot of dope stuff and it's i mean cool nuts is kind of the same way if you look at that tree from cool nuts yes, there are sir. so many branches yeah, and it's man. like we overlap in a lot of ways you know what i'm saying because that's our family and i think that's i think to have a good hip-hop scene you have to have multiple trees right that kind of overlap in places it keep that hip-hop forest that was corny that was, <laughs> <a> scary, <laughs> that was there's never been in more northwest hip-hop like that was true, 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 you gotta true. understand though you gotta understand though like 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 dom said the seattle tree is just as important to us mm-hmm. as the portland yeah. and you know that that was our thing is i was in seattle most of the time dom was in seattle but dom was here and we had it going you know, up there and down here, I was hosting uh, Street Sounds with, yep. with B Mello and before with Cup Father, rest in peace. For sure. um, so we, you know, we, we had our family, you know, in a couple of different places and building those roots. And I'd like to think, you know, I, people still think of us as a Seattle group. We're a Northwest group, but, mm-hmm. you know, that tree is strong. No doubt. No doubt. Boom Bat Project is back. Hey, yo, so speaking of speaking of being back, Boom Bat Project uh Destro, Kareem, aka Nightclub Lang, DJ Trey. I mean that that that's where things started. And then, you know, time goes on and 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 just like just like we often see members of groups change. But now this is like this is the original, right? Trey, like you are back as the yeah. original DJ for Boom Bat Project. Like that's gotta be that's just gotta feel that's just gotta feel like like complete, right? Like yeah. Like Kareem said, fifteen years, man, just since Boom Bat, but then even <laughs> longer since 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 it was the original. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, man. Like I'm I'm, you know, thankful and grateful, you know, um these guys, you know, reached out to me and was like, yo, basically, you know, we're getting the band back together. And <laughs> <laughs> you know, but like I I was I'm super pumped by, you know, them get me back in the group and like just to like get our chemistry back together. And, and, and it's crazy. Cause like, you know, all these years later, like our chemistry is still there, which is, is wild to think about. Like, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm definitely humbled by everything that's, that's going on and just so happy to be a part of the group again. No doubt. No doubt. So, so like I said, the, 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 the first single is out and uh produced by the homie trox which is which is dope because that's fam you know what i mean yeah but you know when we look at we look at the history of folk that you guys have 
have collaborated with, one of the things that truly stands out is the producers that you folks have worked with. Who, like, when you really think about it, when you talk about Northwest, but there again, it just it just shows that the Northwest has been on. The Northwest don't need to get on, but you know, you guys worked so much with uh, Jake One. You worked so much with Vitamin D, just in terms of some of the producers that you guys have worked mm -hmm. with. Um, had a chance to uh, to to talk to y'all on the Welcome to the Neighborhood Radio Show, and we talked about the fact that this is just a single. That like projects, complete projects are are either done or at certain levels of being done. Yeah. So, like, like you said, you've you know reconnected with cats. Did you reconnect with some of those producers as well? I don't know what y'all gonna oh, yeah. put out there. I'm just trying nah, to serve some stuff. Gotta, you know what I mean? No, I mean no. shit. I, I've been texting with Jake all morning. He he's playing golf out at Bandon Dunes. Um, <laughs> you know, like yeah, basically just. I mean, we've got we brought Trox in because Trox is our family and Trox yeah. is one of the illest. He's definitely one of my favorite producers. Absolutely. <laughs> Vitamin, Bean, Jake. Yeah. It's all, it's all happening. This new album though, this first album, basically we've, we've recorded a good, a, a good amount of songs. Um, and we've got an album done. It's called the return flight. Um, We've got vinyl that's coming. We've got CDs. We've got merchandise. But on this album alone, it's uh, it's it's vitamin D. It's Trox. Uh, we got a joint from my boy Craig Rip, uh, representing Canada, Toronto, on there. And um, it's just the first wave. You know, mm -hmm. the second wave has got uh, you know some more of those same folks, and and we're going back to to the the folks that are our family you know vitamin and jake are our family trox is our family yeah. and that's that's what it is we don't need to be weird or, or ask you know that that's family and and family looks out for family and we we do everything that we can to uh make sure that that the music is is gonna bang bang you know and and yeah. those guys always got that for us and and you know that that relationship hasn't waned yeah. over the last 15 20 years it's if anything it's getting stronger right now so yeah i just can't wait i i'm in i just can't wait the, the, the single I, we were all pumped up i think we said on the radio show that the single was the first song that we actually recorded when when we all got back together Word. we gave the we gave the track over to trey and we just said trey do your fucking thing and he came back with these cuts that were fucking amazing. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. And then so we were just like, you know what? Let's take that momentum. And then it just kept on getting better and better and better. And I even like I hate to say this, but Hagler versus Hearns is definitely not the strongest joint on the record. No, um, absolutely. So we got no, it, it's a, it's a good warm up. <laughs> yeah, it's a good warm up for sure. Yeah, we got uh, the, the album. I think people are really going to like it. And I, I'm, I'm thinking right now, just played it for a few folks and um, I'm just really happy with the way it came out. But even this next album after that's going to be even better because the music up. is getting better. That's what's up. But that's what you want, man. You want to give us a taste. And then, like you said, just, just wet the appetite and then hit us with like, you know what I'm saying? Hit us with the full course, which it sounds like is what you guys did with the, with the project. Um, the, the, you know, like you said, man, times have changed, and and I I have learned as I've as I've been doing this for a while that I understand what what my lane is when it terms to when in terms of um, the the music that I that I really try to push out there just because of what I feel like is is what's good music to me what I think needs to be needs to mm -hmm. be celebrated, and I'm from an era where the music that you guys make to me I feel like that's that's the cream of the crop when it comes to hip hop. And I said to right. y'all before, man, like y'all a boom bap project. And that's a, like, that's a lofty, like you coming out there saying we are boom bap project. Like that's a lofty thing that you're putting out in front of folk. And you follow that up or you supported that not only with the music you've done in the past, but in the music that you're doing right now from what we've heard with Hagler and Hearns in a time where that's not the most popular uh, style of music when we look at this genre that we call hip hop. I mean, it's really or hip-hop music, it's really changed, right? Trap mm -hmm. music is what everybody's mm -hmm. on right now. But yeah. you guys are being true to what you what you have done, what you've been successful doing. Um, was there any sense that, man, like, we got to, you know, we got to do anything different? You know, I think for me, I feel like hip-hop has changed, but it's also grown, right? 
So I think it's, it's, it's short-sighted of people to think that hip hop can only have one sound at a time. I mean, imagine if they did that to rock, like, I, I think to me, that's just, to me, it's just kind of, I don't want to say racism, but I mean, it's like, they want to fit you in one particular lane and they're like, everything has to sound like this. This is what's hot for the moment. There is no other genre of music who acts that way. Why should we have to be forced to sound like somebody else? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just cause that's their lane. Not everybody, I don't listen to that much trap. That doesn't mean I don't want to appreciate what people do and can recognize talent and respect what's, respect would should be respected yeah. but i'm also you know what i'm saying i'm not gonna sit around and pretend that i'm something i'm not and i feel like there is a lane for that and i think i think our job and our place is that we need to show people like hey there's still this lane and i think there's other groups who still have that i mean you have mellow music who pretty much their whole thing is based on kind of that sub lanes mm -hmm. and i think i mean alternative music and grunge wasn't popular at first and then it became popular and that was part of rock and if they said oh it doesn't sound like you know it doesn't sound like twisted sisters so we're not going to play it then that would have been the end of that i think we need to get past that and i think our job is to be true to ourselves and make dope music is our job that is our that is our job description as a group as musicians make the best music we can whatever folks decide outside of that that is not our job. <laughs> yeah. Our job is making dope music and making it mm -hmm. so that people like you, people like us in other places connect with it. Yeah. And we can be successful in our, in our own lane. Yeah, we're not going to be post Malone. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. not trying to be post Malone ever. That's him. <laughs> Let him be he. We mm -hmm. will be us. So that's how I feel about it. And I think we don't, we, even, we don't even have those conversations really. Mm -hmm. Cause we, we like, like Trey said, when we got together, that chemistry was just, it just clicked, but that, that's what I know. You know, that's, I can't name one Travis Scott song. No, no, no disrespect. But like when, when me and me and me and Destro rap, we just, we like hard shit, you know, we, we want to, we want to spit. And so that's, that's what we did. And it's funny when we get beats, like when Trox sends us a folder, I don't even need to question I will circle the one on the folder, the beat that I like, and it's always, <laughs> Destro always be like, yep, that's the one. <laughs> like we'll compare lists. There might be like one song that we like more than the other, but there's always like three that we're like, yep, all right, those are the three we get. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? That's what we're going to work on. So, yeah. And it's always been that way, like with Jake, like when, mm -hmm. like even when Jake sent Welcome to Seattle, the beat for us, he didn't even, he just said, yo, you guys are going to love this. Here it is, you know, like cats know, we know it's not a, it's, it's not a mystery. Yeah. We just, we want to come out and smash. No doubt. Yeah. No doubt. yeah. And also on that note, I just want to mention that like, you know, we're, we're staying true to the hip hop roots with like raw lyrics and, you know, scratching yeah. everything on the track. So, um, you know, we've all grew up that way and we're staying true to the art. Yeah, which is which is so dope. Which is what I love, man. Chopping up with Boom Bap Project, right? Quick, man. I just gotta I, I just gotta drop drop some love to to folk who support the supporters, man. I gotta say say what up to my folk over at Acapella Apparel for their support of the Cliff Notes podcast, man. They just released new a new line uh, in the fall and winter, man, and, and and it's dope. And it's you know it's is is if if you're watching the video situation, I got on the uh, the, the the Portland T right now. This is a this is a, a acapella joint, man. They got like I said, they got a dope lineup. You can check out the website at acapella apparel. It's a k e p e l e dot com. Chopping up with Boom Bat Project. All right, y'all. So um, I want to take a minute to get into to get into a little bit more, but before I do, uh, we're gonna take a break and go right to this. Peace, peace world. I just want to check in real quick and remind everybody: if you haven't yet, man, you got to check out the Welcome to the Neighborhood Radio Show. It airs every Saturday night straight out of Portland, Oregon, on Portland radio station X-Ray FM. I do my thing there for two hours every Saturday night playing dope joints from artists literally from all over the planet. We're also live streaming the situation on Twitch and on YouTube and on Facebook, as long as they keep us up. You know what I mean? Also on Twitter, everything is at DJ Cliff. So be sure to tap in every Saturday night. 8 p.m. Pacific time, and then 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So check in every Saturday night, 8 p.m. Welcome to the neighborhood with your guy, DJ Cliff. 
All right, let's get back to the interview. Back with Boom Bat Project. So, uh, like we've been talking about, the single is out right now. Hagler and Hearns album is album is done. Um, any scent and vinyl is coming. Any sort of sense or feel of of when we can expect the uh, the album the album to to, to drop. I think in June. June-ish. Okay. Yeah. Summertime. Yeah, yeah, you know, I was just talking to one of the homies about the campaigns these days and thinking about where music is. A lot of people just drop. We come from the era where you got a campaign and you do a single, then you do another single and you drop it and we're going to, I guess we're going to stick with that because, you know, we, we uh we want to build it up and, and make sure a lot of it, I think we mentioned too, we, our social media wise, we boom bap had zero followers because we, you know, we didn't, didn't maintain our, <laughs> we, we didn't maintain our social media accounts and all that stuff. So we've been building it up from the ground up and uh, that's been kind of a fun part of it. No doubt. Yeah. No doubt. It's funny B. So like I've been reaching out to some folk in, in, in my circle of influence to, just to, just to help with the with, with the promotion and to help with the push, and it's funny how just what you said, man. Like I, I reach out to some folks to be like, "Yo, really? Like I was always a fan of Boom Bap. So is that the reception that you guys have been getting so far? Like, yo, really? Mm-hmm. Boom Bap's back, new joints. Like, it, I mean, I would expect that that's that that's what what you guys would be hearing. Yes, and that's been kind of dope. I know uh, one particular blog who was super pumped. Um, it's so pumped that I saw them like on Instagram when we posted other blogs posting it, they were going like, yeah, that's, that's our joy. <laughs> that's That's dope. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's, that's, uh, that's what we want to give people. You know what I'm saying? That's what we want to share with folks. And that's, it goes back to what we were saying. That's why we never considered changing up for the times. It's like, that doesn't mean there isn't growth. Right. You know what I'm saying? I think pen wise, we both, we've lived more life. So there is a lot more mm-hmm. for us to talk about and different things that we can kind of hash out on music. Yeah. Doesn't mean we got to try to sound like what somebody else sound like. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Mm-hmm. Um, after having been away from the crew for a minute and, and, and having the, and just having your life experience and, and, you know, doing events and just working on your, on your own skills, Trey, does it Mm -hmm. feel like you're bringing something different from the group to, than you did before? Like Dom said, I mean, we all grow in, in, in what we do from, from an MC standpoint, obviously that's, Mm -hmm. that's writing from a DJ standpoint, that's more Mm -hmm. the technical piece. That's more reading crowds. That's more listening to a a ton of different genres of music and how that sort of builds your mixing style. Like, are we going to hear like, yo, like that's, that's, that's the new Trey, yo. Yeah. Well, for sure. Like, I mean, you know, when I got with the group back then, like there was no Serato, like, you know, I was just mm. carrying to carrying crates of vinyl to the club to spin. Now you have thousands of songs on your laptop now. Um, and also like, you know, entering battles back in the day kind of helped me prepare for um, this time now and like, you know, kind of sharpening my skills after all these years um, kind of helped me get to this point to where I feel a little bit more comfortable with my skills to where I can like, you know, flex a little bit on the, on the record. So, no doubt, you know, no doubt. I, I'm just, I'm just happy to hear uh, when people hear the record, like I'm, I'm really excited to, just bring you know the true hip hop form out and for, sure. for the world to hear it. So word up. Well, I told you, B. Like when I when I heard you do your thing on the Hagler and Hearns joints, I was like, <laughs> 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 yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So, yeah. so so we're you know we're 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 in 2021 now. We see things mm-hmm. starting to open up, right? We we know mm-hmm. local shows are starting to pop up. Limited capacity is is growing in capacity. That means that you know as 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 the vaccine situation continues to roll mm-hmm. out and like you guys have an opportunity to start you know to start like reaching out to fans again. Like, are you starting to talk about that yet? Yeah, no. man. We we got some stuff. We got some stuff in the works that we've been working on for a while got some collaborations that we've been, we're trying to do this a little bit different, I think, than, than just, you know, come out and start doing some shows because you, you can't do show like our, our release show uh, for, for reprogram, we had like 700 people in the venue, you know, for that. Now 
it's just not realistic even with times even if we were to throw a show we wouldn't get that turnout probably the way that it is so we're trying to do focus on the exclusivity and the uniqueness and the dopeness and find some we found some collaborators some companies here and some folks here that are doing some dope shit and one of our one of our passions as a crew is beer um another passion of a crew is is eating and cooking and smoking and so uh i'll say that we've we've teamed up with a couple folks couple companies here that are all about that but keep it hip-hop and so if you think hip-hop you think beer cider food uh things like that we're trying to do something a little bit different rather than just hey we're gonna do this or you know, we're going to do this, just really looking at collaborating with dope folks that are doing really, really dope shit. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So that that's kind of what we've been doing. Definitely trying to do it a little bit different and have a different perspective on things, but be us at the same time. Me and Dom, as soon as I moved back to Portland, first thing we were doing was barbecue. Yep. You know, and that's that's like a big part of our our friendship and, and, and just what we are all about. And so, you know, that's, that's going to play a big part in what we do uh, with this album release and even further trying to. Yeah. Uh, and I think that, that's kind of, that kind of goes back to the growth thing. Right. So it's like to do hip hop, but be comfortable enough in your own skin to go like, you know what, I'm going to collaborate and do something with food. I'm going to do something with, you know, that's stuff that sometimes when you're younger and like, nah, I want my image to be this, that it's like, it doesn't fit in that. You don't allow yourself to see yourself outside of the picture of what you think you want to look like. You know what I'm saying? As an artist. So it's kind of fun to just be like, fuck it. You know? (laughs) And I've been saying, I've been saying for a while, man. I mean, the reality of it is hip hop is hip hop as a, as a, as a, as an art form is middle age now. Right. And then when you think Mm -hmm. about the growth of, of, of each, um, each part of hip hop, right. So like the next Olympics is going to have breakdancing. You know what I'm saying? Like who would have thought that that would have happened? Right. We look at, we look at what has happened with DJing from, from DJing just for parties to DJing for artists to DJing for you know the the battle scene to mm-hmm. especially through the pandemic how how DJing has really um, taken hold of what people are doing with live streaming right we look at how graffiti artists how graffiti artists now are being welcomed into art installations I mean just as a whole it's the 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 the, the whole art form has grown. So I think you're right, man. I mean, I think looking at ways to to continue to embrace the fact that hip hop culture is now embraced as a part of culture, it only makes sense. And we've already seen yeah. certain mm-hmm. certain areas of successes of collaborations with with hip hop music and drink, hip hop music right. and food. So I'm really excited mm-hmm. to see, especially being based out of the Portland area and knowing how Portland deals with with food. I'm really excited and intrigued to see what you guys got cooking pardon the pun but. yeah well, some of our <laughs> folks i mean that's good i look too i mean I, I look up in seattle i see my guy geo mm-hmm. prometheus he, he's got a spot hood famous our yeah. old partner zach johnson had meaty johnson's uh mm-hmm. my other partner marcus lalario has got like four or five different he got little woodies and different mm-hmm. like food has seemed like a natural progression my, my guy cool nuts yeah, you know, is doing trap kitchen. Trap yeah. kitchen. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like uh, OG was doing. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. uh, cats are doing some dope ass shit, and and like, yeah, food, food Network had make made it, uh, you know, really. I wouldn't say popular, but it's really brought that food culture out, right. and and yep. we've always been about it, and that's just just a big thing, a big thing with us, and and with it. The first thing me, Trey, and Dom do when we all get together is go grab a beer. And mm-hmm. here in the Northwest, man, we're so spoiled. We really with, are. With the breweries that we have mm-hmm. here. And then when you go and reach out to some of these breweries, we're reaching out. It's like, damn, those guys are fans of ours. Yeah. Like uh, of our music. Because, you know, a lot of, a lot of, we were, we were there back in the days. Like cats knew us because we were doing all the big shows, you know, yeah. and, now we're reaching out and finding out like, yo, how can we collaborate with 
some of our fans and fam that are now at breweries or at restaurants or doing some dope shit. Mm -hmm. Um, And Portland, man, Portland, Seattle, Eugene, the whole Northwest is food carts, food trucks. Yeah. Um, you know, we yeah. we there's some talented, talented cooks out here. Really, really talented. Um, and and that's just like a big thing, man. It's 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 uh it's something that we want to highlight and focus on, and and it's it's a part of our passion. Yeah, that's what's up, that's what's up man. Chopping over boom bad project. So, so as we mentioned, man, things are things are obviously different now. Um, just in terms of the times we are in, in in the way that music is released and streaming is obviously a big part of that. Uh-huh. But when you have the opportunity to have full control of the art that you're creating and putting out there, it definitely does take um, communities coming together, right? It takes a collective to help to help um, get the word out and to let people know. And true, true that now we have the internet in a way that we didn't have where, yes, it, it makes it easier to reach people literally all over the planet. There's a lot of, like, there's a lot of noise out there, right? And so yep. navigate, figuring out how to navigate that is 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 important and valuable so you Mm -hmm. have you know you have platforms like mine where my goal is to 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 utilize my platform to to spread the word but you have fans of yours who maybe um have other platforms or maybe they're just fans and they just you know they're excited to have to to know that you guys are back and they want to they want to tap in like how do you how do you seek that 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 help that that assistance from folk to help let people know like yo we're back you know what i mean you got the visuals out you got the single that drop you got other information you have you know i know that you guys have done other interviews and podcasts and it's that and the third that that people can share but like what do you want to see your fans and your supporters do to help push boom back to this to this next generation that's a that's a great question no, bro, that's why, you know what I'm saying? That's what I do, baby. That's what to do. I feel like you've done this before. No, I think I think for us, at least so far, it has been more organic. Like, a lot of, there are people who are fans that are also, like, super, like, homies that we've known since that time and we see when we post that they're posting it themselves they're they're helping us get the word out without us even like asking for it um i mean i think it's a delicate thing i think when people connect to it you have a tendency to share it so it's trying to keep that connection um and being thankful being yeah. thankful for every single person who shares a song. If we see it, we're trying to make sure that we reach out to let them know, hey, you know what? We appreciate you. Thank you for helping spread the word. And I think that's big. The, the power of just saying thank you um, mm-hmm. is a big, big thing. Because I think a lot of people and artists are probably sometimes some of the worst at it we take things yeah. for granted, right? Like, I made this dope music. You better share it, son. <laughs> but like, that's... <laughs> the music doesn't matter if nobody wants to listen to it, right? Yeah. Music yeah. doesn't matter. Like, at, like Kareem was talking about a lot of people just drops, drop albums, right? Which adds to this noise, which also adds to the fact that a lot of times there is great music out there that none of us will ever hear. You know, also, you know how Biz Marquee said, you so old, you knew Central Park when it was just a plant. <laughs> <laughs> with, with with us when we were in our early 20s late teens early 20s when we were getting together we didn't know what the hell we wanted to do but mm-hmm. now growing with some of these folks watching them grow people have found their lanes and their passions so now you're revisiting in your 40s or however old you might be and you're looking around and you're saying that's my homie we used to yep. rap together we used to DJ together. Now this guy owns this restaurant or this guy owns this company and this, it's the greatest thing to see how people grow, but it started in hip hop. And you go to every single business, you see hip hop heads now that all started with you, but they're like, whether they're in the boardroom or whether they're GM of some restaurant or managing some brewery, it all started with hip hop. And that's like been the greatest thing is going back out and, seeing what everyone's doing, especially me coming back to the Northwest and being like, damn, you're really killing it with what you're doing. You still, you still got that same passion, but that passion moved into beer or into something else. And so Mm -hmm. I think reaching back out to those people and they know who we are, we know who they are has really been helpful for us. And also there's still people doing it, uh, you know, on a high level 
here mm-hmm. and, and just reconnecting with folks and, and yeah. you know, ain't shit changed with us, man. I mean, a lot has changed. I got a baby coming in a week. Uh, you congrats, know. Congrats, homie. Congrats. Well, thank you, man. I, a lot has changed, but at I'm almost time, my kids are almost out. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah, life has changed, but you know, yeah. like the, the the people that we love have not changed. Absolutely. And, uh, it, the, the greatest thing, man, sharing that that uh, wealth, sharing that space and uh, mm-hmm. being proud and happy for other people, man. No doubt, mm-hmm. no doubt, man. That's love for real, for real. Chopping up with Boom Bap Project. So, so as you mentioned, man, um, there wasn't there wasn't a, a, a social media presence for for the collective, but there is now. So, a great way to tap in to to keep to be updated on visual releases, uh, single releases, album releases, any other any other things that people should be aware of to tap into. So, like, what's the social? How should people how should people tap in with you guys? Right, Instagram is a great place. At the uh, underscore boom bap project, um, we're also on Twitter and Facebook. Um, the band camp is going to be the best place for merch. For, for sure. merch, um, and you know, again, band camp has become that. It's yeah. become the mm-hmm. place where artists can sell their merch, especially in a pandemic. Mm-hmm. So the band camp, we're about to have everything up on there. I think we mentioned the album, hopefully dropping around June. It's done. We're just kind of waiting to get the vinyl back and and we're dropping a couple other videos. Um, we're actually filming next week. We've got uh, a joint that we did with uh, with vitamin D called Dion Sanders. That's just going to I mean, it's one of it, it's it's hard. Yeah. Um, and so we got uh, we got that couple videos coming out and then vinyl and all that. And then, you know, we're hopefully going to have these album release shows and, and we'll see what else, but you know, we all working, we all have, have nine to fives and everything, mm-hmm. but uh, this is something that, that is a great release for us. And uh, you know, find us on your socials and, and support. We appreciate it. No doubt. No doubt. For sure. Boom bad project. Yo fellas, I, uh, like I said, man, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of, of, of the Northwest hip hop scene. Um, the Northwest hip hop scene has embraced me, you know, cause I'm not, I'm not native, but I've been here and, and for, I've been here for a minute. And so to, to get to know the Northwest hip hop scene and really fall in love with the Northwest hip hop scene, to be connected to, to, to cats like yourselves who are foundational is huge, bro. So I just want to say how much I appreciate you guys taking time and just really excited that, that you're, that you're still making such great music and um, so for me, I just want to say thank you. Hey, thank you. Bruh, bro. You are yeah. so you are so selfless in what you do for the Northwest, bro. I'm telling you the truth from everybody that I've talked to, to other groups, like everything. You are selfless. You put it down for the Northwest. You put the Northwest hip hop first. And that's man, that's something to uh, to honor. So thank you. No yeah, doubt. thank you. No doubt, thank man. you so much. For sure. For sure. DJ Trey. Kareem, a.k.a. Nightclubber Lang, Destro Destructo, Boom Bap Project are back. Um, so definitely tap in. Stay connected to everything uh, DJ Clip Productions, whether it's the podcast or the radio shows or who knows what else. Um, you know, like I said, as things pop up, man, you know, we got this mic check situation, so we'll see what's up. But, yes. um, yeah. but definitely tap in with the guys, man. Once again, man, I, I, I truly, truly appreciate y'all, man. Thank y'all so much. Thank, Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. Y'all. Absolutely. Uh, remember, you can check out the Cliff Notes podcast everywhere you listen to podcasts, like literally everywhere you listen to audio. We on Audible, we on Pandora, we on Apple Podcasts, of course, Google Podcasts, Spotify, all of that. So definitely tap in. If you have questions or comments, you can hit me up on the email, cliffnotes at gmail.com. You can check out the Cliff Notes direct on, at cliffnotes.com. It's K-L-Y-P-H. Um, so once again, man, shout out to, to to the supporters, Acapella Apparel, for their continued support of the Cliff Notes podcast. Check them out. They got fresh gear. I rock it. You know what I mean? So you should rock it as well. A-K-E-P-E-L-E dot com. And last but never ever least, big ups to the homie. There he has it for creating the official theme song for the Cliff Notes podcast. All right, y'all. Do we have an opportunity to do this again? Y'all be blessed. Peace. Thank you.